life will never stop teaching me and I will never stop learning. You can't teach an old man new tricks? <laughs> yes, you can. You sure you can. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Sunny Silver Linings. Sunny's guest today is Neil Medwed, Executive Director of Strategic Partnerships and M&A at Meriplex. In today's episode, they chat about the differences between running small and large MSPs, top lessons to help young entrepreneurs, Meriplex's vision perspective for the future, and so much more. And now, your host, the founder and CEO of IT by Design, Mr. Sonny Kayla. Over to you, Sonny. Hi, Neil. Welcome to the show. Sonny, I am so happy and proud to be here. I'm looking forward to a great uh, great time with you as always, as always, as always. <laughs> we make it fun, right? It could be Vegas. It could be out of Vegas. We make it fun. And I still remember our... Uh, the the black uh, blackout dining in in the dark experience that was amazing uh, experience last time we met there in Vegas. I'll tell you something. It, it's something I'll always remember for the rest of my life. Thank you for for taking me there for for offering to take me there. We always have fun whenever we're together. Yeah. So I don't know if I can beat that experience, but we're gonna try. Uh, so let's get into this, Neil. Uh, you have so much experience. Uh, that is one thing that I am so excited about today, that you're going to share that experience with our viewers. And you're such a great human being. You know, when, when I see you, it's just your aura, your energy. Uh, you know, I, it's just pleasant to be around you, Neil. And, you know, a good human being with so much experience who is so interested and willing to give back to the world that is what really where, where my excitement is coming from today. Well, thank you very much. You know, it's it's an honor again to be with you and to be able to speak to, you know, the group over here. You know, I'm a 39-year VAR MSP. You know, I got into the technology industry in 1983. I owned preferred technology solutions for 26 and a half years before selling my organization about 27 months ago, you know, throughout my time with, in my industry, you know, I've been very dedicated to technology communities, trying to help people. To me, the big picture, I don't care what type of religion or, or who, who, you, who, who you pray to, you know, to me, whenever that day comes, it's a dash between life and death. It's how many people you positively impact in this world that's truly going to make the difference whenever that time comes. And that's something that's always driven me. And I know it's driven you also. You know, one thing I love about you and Cam and the whole IT by Design team is a positive energy, the positive spirit that you guys exude. You know, I think that's why we get along, you know, very, very well. <laughs> You know, we try to be a positive on this world, and and it, it it's it's not fake. It, it it's real. It, it's from the as far inside of our bodies as it comes. So sharing, building, helping people avoid mistakes and enhance successes. I think that's what drives both of us right over there. How yeah, we can possibly absolutely. impact. Yeah, and it's all about you know, it's all about really uh, how many lives we can touch in a positive way and really add value to them. As uh, my mentor, John C. Maxwell, will say, Sonny, add value to people around you always and uh, always stay positive and productive. And when I'm looking at this conversation or kind of think, I was thinking about this conversation, I'm like, you know, like with the experience that you have as an entrepreneur, and if you can share your top three lessons learned sure. as an entrepreneur, that can help a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs unlock their full entrepreneurial potential. Sure. So what are the top three lessons learned? And let's start there. I'm going to start from a very baseline aspect, and mm -hmm. that is be true to yourself. 
be true to your teammates, and be true to your customers. If you have that baseline honesty, I'll call it, where number one, every morning, my father taught me this when I was a young, young boy, Neil, you know, every morning you have to wake up and look yourself in the mirror. And if you don't like what you see, you better change, you know, what you're doing. And the meaning of that is, is being honest, being a good person and doing what's right at all times. And if you're true to yourself, true to your people and true to your customers, being honest, that's how you build a great trust from the employee standpoint. Employees want to know, you know where they stand, you know, what they could be doing better. You know, what, what are their pluses? What are their, what are their negatives that they can work on and, and enhance their abilities, if you will, which enhances your team? Your customers, they might not always want to hear what you have to say to them. You know, let's say security-wise or whatever it might be. But I truly, truly believe that by being honest, brutally honest in many cases, it makes a huge difference in one's success. Always look what's best for the business, what's best for the customer, what's best for your teammate. If you focus on those three things, then good will follow. A big thing, and this is something that I had to teach myself, and it's actually something that I've been teaching my son-in-law, who I love dearly, take time for yourself. He is a very successful insurance salesperson. And just like us in a technology field, our clients depend on us. Mm -hmm. And I had preferred technology solutions for 26 and a half years. And the beginning portion of my journey owning a company, I would say in some ways a company owned me, if that mm. makes sense to you. <laughs> yeah. you know, whereas, you know, I would hesitate to take time for myself. If I took long weekends, I'd consider that a vacation versus taking a week or two weeks off to recharge, to regenerate, you know, myself. Part of that was I didn't delegate effectively. I was that funnel at the bottom that had to make every decision. My people weren't empowered. They may have had titles, but they weren't empowered to make the major decisions within the organization. And I learned that, you know, through a peer group I was in by them saying, Neil, you know, you're the bus boy, you're the dishwasher, you know, you're the maitre d', you're the chef, you're the waiter, in essence. You're hiring these people to do a job. You have to delegate to them, empower them, and then coach them. And in the long run, if they're not the right person in that seat, then you make changes, find another seat for that person or, you know, replace that person. So that's really number two. And that, you know, Sonny, that's a huge one. You know, mm -hmm. making your business a business that's scalable, that allows you to take the time, not, that, not just that you need, but your family needs. Your family wants to be present you know, with you. So as you organize your business, make sure to, you know, keep that in the forefront. And probably number three is you can choose to be an island upon yourself as a technology owner, or you could be a confederation of quality companies working mm -hmm. together. You know, there's many peer groups in the industry. And throughout my journey, that was probably the most impactful thing I did. You know, in a peer group, you're usually set up with nine or 10, let's say, other owners who sit in your exact same seat, who understand your challenges, what's going on in your daily life. And because they know what we're, how you live, where you're, you know, how, what it feels like being in that seat, you know, they can share with you ways to minimize mistakes and enhance successes. And having that bat phone I'll call to this group of people who know you deeply is a magnificent thing. You know, whether you're facing a customer issue or a business issue or even a family issue, mm -hmm. 
it can be invaluable. So you can be an island upon yourself, or you can be a, a confederation of companies of owners working together for the common good. I found being at confederation in a peer group environment is one of the best moves one can make. That is so much wisdom there, what you shared with me. And what I heard you say is that, you know, it starts with, I mean, you shared a great example, what your father uh, taught you in terms of uh, looking in the mirror every morning and, you know, really uh, loving yourself and, you know, knowing that, okay, this is the person that you want to be. I think that's a great uh, takeaway. And then from the entrepreneurial point of view, uh, like, you know, starting with, um, you know, what is best for yourself, team, clients, having that relationship and trust and where you have clarity on what is best for you, what is best for the team, what is best for the customer. So you you can define that greater good, you keeping those three pillars in mind. And those are normally the three pillars that builds a business. So as an entrepreneur, having clarity in making decisions based on greater good with keeping those three perspectives in mind is really, really important. And number two, I loved it, what you said. You, <laughs> when you said, I thought as a business owner, I owned this business, but actually business owned me. And that happens with so many startup, small business owners, including me, I felt the same that I thought I started this business to create my freedoms, freedom of my mentor, Dan Sullivan will say, freedom of relationship, freedom of time, freedom of money, freedom of purpose, because that's what normally makes people start a business that you want to really do something that is your calling, your purpose, that you're not limited by any structure and that gives you freedom. Freedom of time that you work when you want to work, you don't have to work when you don't have to work, but you end up working anyways with, as an entrepreneur, but it's a freedom, right? No one is giving you shift hours. So that's a freedom of time. And freedom of relationships, who do you want to work with, who you want to bring in as a partner, team member, uh, you know, so that's the, the relationship freedom. And then uh, the money, of course, that financial freedom. So, but we all start as, on, as entrepreneurs to create those freedoms, we, but we became kind of uh, uh, end up reporting to the business, right? The, the business owns yeah. us. Like it's like feel having that sense of not having those freedoms because we don't have the skills as early entrepreneurs to delegate properly, empower, coach our team, you know, talent uh, mapping that you mentioned in terms of, you know, coach, uh, either if the position, right person, right seat is not there, move or replace, whatever, you know, like just do the right thing make a positive, make that positive impact on people and business. But you got to really make sure that you you kind of uh, have the right team where they are in the business doing things and you are not in that forest lost. You got to be able to step outside of that forest and see how things are moving and going. And okay, the third piece is rather than being that person, uh, you know, like uh, on your own island as an entrepreneur, join a community, join a peer group, could be build it, could be there are many other peer groups in the in the channel. IT by design community is called build it. So like as a part of that peer group of similar interests, similar businesses, people from various uh, locations, your challenges are the same. You learn from each other. And also uh, normally peer groups are your like advisory board. They are your kind of free advisory board where they, they are kind of holding you accountable as a peer. So having those three things that you mentioned is, is really, really key to be a successful entrepreneur where you end up creating those freedoms that, that really made you start your business. So being, uh, I mean, knowing uh, that greater good for yourself, team, clients, 
and really being able to build a team, high performing team culture and working with, you know, focus on people and team building and then being part of uh, peer groups uh, where you learn from each other. So now let's go into a little bit more like you have now made that transition from being a you know business owner running your own MSP now you are part of a very big MSP called Mariplex and i'm sure there is you're expanding yourself because you probably have never had that type of uh, expansion before with the scale of the business and the value that you are uh, you are creating and recently Mariplex was so much in news during restructuring because that is where people you have you Mariplex have validated their business model, their value creation, and more and more investors are interested in investing in there. But it really takes a totally different mindset, totally different entrepreneurial experience. So can you share, my question there is, can you share the difference, like one or two or three key differences that you see now in your role right now as part of Big Mariplex as Big MSP versus when you were running a small MSP? What are the key differences? Sure. I mean, I like to say, again, about 27 months ago is when I became, you know, part of Mariplex. And just for a little bit of back history for the audience here, when I sold to Mariplex, we're the second major acquisition, but we were under 80 people. Yeah, corporate office in Houston. And then they bought my company in Dallas and we're less than 80 people at that time, 27 months ago. You know, currently, we're about 600 people, so massive growth. And from those two cities, it's about 10 cities currently, you know, with more to come. I like to say two things. Number one, if I knew then what I know now, I would have <laughs> run my company quite a bit, you know, different. You know, I've gone from selling my business 27 months ago to buying 10 companies in the last two years. And that's just M&A growth. Organic growth, we're growing almost 30% per year. So it's very, very exciting. From a larger company scenario, even when we're 80 people, because of the leadership of our CEO, David Henley, it was a much more thoughtful approach to everything that we do. I equate it to when I was preferred technology solutions, I could go to a conference, let's say, you know, meet with vendors and have some beers at the bar, have a good old time and come back to my office and say, hey, everybody, you want to go this way versus that way. In the Mariplex world, everything and underlying everything was much more thoughtful. When you look at vendor management for a moment, you're choosing a vendor. When you choose a new vendor from the you know, big picture we're talking over here. It affects finance. How profitable is it going to be? It affects operations. How are we going to manage the new vendor? It The technical side, how are we going to train everybody? The sales side, how are we going to sell whatever that new solution is? So the speed of the decision-making process is much slower and much more well, well thought out, uh, you know, in that sense. You know, you can have great relationships with a vendor, but there's many people involved in the decision-making process, which helps you make sure it's the right decision. Cybersecurity and those types of things, just staffing as a whole, you know, when you're a smaller MSP, Staffing is more and more difficult. You know, you have end users, the supply versus demand issues, as we all know. You have end users who need technology help, IT help, internal IT help. And many times they can pay more than we as smaller MSPs can. You know, you have other bigger MSPs that if they want quality talent can probably not only pay more, for that talent, but offer also offer more exciting types of projects, you know, things like that. So from a talent level, I, I like to say that I couldn't afford to hire 
half the people that we have as teammates at Mariplex because of the deeper pockets, the, the better for their families, forget everything else, but for the families, being able to build and grow because of our organic growth and our national expansion, you know, within the uh, walls of the company they're working for, usually the talent can be capped as far as how far they're going to go in a smaller organization. So the talent levels, we all know how expensive cybersecurity talent is. Everybody says they're great in cybersecurity, but there's different levels of, I'll call it great. You know, I thought we we're great at preferred technology solutions. And we really, in a big picture, we're not as good as I personally, you know, thought we were when I had something better to compare it to. The mentoring, you know, smaller organization versus a larger organization, because of the talent that we're able to attract, I've been, I've learned again more in two, you know, a little bit over two years, two years and whatever months than I have in probably a decade before, even being in peer groups and things like that, because it gave me a different lens to look through. It gave me from a talent perspective, um, leaders who have been there, done that. And, you know, that's been a very, very exciting from a career side. I'm working because I'm loving what I'm doing versus having to work for the financial aspect of it. And that's a very, very good position. But one of the things that makes me so happy in what I'm doing day in, day out, is the ability to learn from the career standpoint, back to being able to look at things in a different lens. You know, whether it be how you deal with a situation or you know, why was a decision made this way versus that way and really peeling back the layers of the onion and truly realizing, you know, how and why it was done in a certain way are things that from a, from, from my growth, you know, you say you can't, you, you can't teach an old man new tricks. <laughs> yes, you can. You certainly <laughs> can. And, 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 I'm not sure if you can tell my passion. You know, I'm a very passionate person. I'm, I wear my feelings on, on my sleeve. You know, yeah. if I like something, you can tell. And if I don't like something, you know, I can't hide back to that brutal honesty of, of something that I live my life on. You know, being able, to, being able to have mentors within the organization as well as externally. Sonny, I've learned a lot from you. You know, and that's something I'm I'm blessed with. You're an amazing man. Cam's an amazing woman. The whole build IT team, team, the family. That's the one thing that 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 that. Whenever I'm around you and your group, the the, the heart, the family, the everything from the top down. Just like my my CEO is amazing, Dave Henley. You're that amazing CEO. Cam's that amazing leader. You know, it's just it just it exudes that positive career building ability within an organization that attracts people. And yeah. back to a past comment, many people think that owning your own business is easy. You know, you put your you know, feet on your desk and you kick back with your arms and, and the world comes to you financially, lifestyle and everything else. Being an entrepreneur is the hardest, hardest, hardest thing that most people will ever deal with. And finding the right partners to work with, such as IT by design from a staffing perspective. Yeah. That yeah. makes your life so much easier. Yeah. So that, that no, thank you for sharing that, uh, Neil. And it's like, you know, the there's just so much wisdom. And I want to take a minute here to unpack what you just said uh like you know the it takes a person of uh growth mindset with lifelong learning when you made that comment that you know you're still learning you're growing right and that's how i am as well that i i like you know life university will never stop teaching me life will never stop teaching me and i will never stop learning and so that 
that, you know, it's really that continuous uh, improvement, continuous transformation of yourself as a person is so important for even to stay young, right? So it's, age mm-hmm. is just a number. Uh, it is about that growth, the growth and our desire to contribute at a higher, highest level is the is the basic human need. That keep, keeps us going. That keeps us young. That kind of gives us that uh, expanded life and healthier life. And so lifelong learning is my takeaway from that comment. And when you talk about like the bigger MSP versus smaller MSP, what you shared is, it's really the with the bigger MSP because of the resources, it could be financial resources, that you can make more investments, you can grow faster. When something is growing, everyone is growing, that means talent, your ability to attract talent and retain talent because attracting requires that confidence in a company. When a company is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, got really good backing in terms of financials, and then you have the, you know, you have the team and resources, the caliber of talent that you're going to work with. It really attracts people, your brand. And then mm-hmm. being able to retain, it really depends on giving people the, those growth paths. I mean, grow, uh, the career roadmap, uh, having them, uh, I mean, uh, explore new opportunities, new possibilities that normally helps retain people other than just giving them an increase. And so it's really for a bigger business. Uh, that's one thing that I have heard is different. And then your ability to also like grow organic 30% and then inorganic, like through m stuff, moving from 80 people to 600 people is a huge accomplishment in a very short period of time. And you being able to bring in 10 companies, uh, that is really, really amazing, uh, amazing. And that is really, really awesome to hear and so much to learn from Mariplex growth journey. Now, my last question to you is, where is Mariplex today? And where are you going from the vision perspective? So can you share with this world, with this universe, where is Mariplex going? Sure. First and foremost, Mariplex is history. You know, Mariplex from a DNA standpoint, is a 21-year-old CLEC, wholesale relationships with over 90 different circuit providers. It was about four years ago that our CEO was a father-son company, David Henley, had a bigger vision. Let's take managed circuits, combine that with managed IT and managed cybersecurity, and that's the wave of the future. And he said that to his father, and his father said, son, if you believe that strongly in it, find private equity and take out the family side of the business and live your dream. And that's exactly what happened. When I look at my 39 year history, our CEO, Dave Henley is a top five talent of anybody I've ever met. You know, 45 years old and he's brilliant. He's brilliant in many different ways. His thought process, it, it, he knows what he wants to build, what we want to build, what the board, you know, wants to build. And he's doing it. You know, we're doing it as an organization. You know, Mariplex right now, I'll tell you my personal goals, you know, first and foremost. You know, from a top-level strategic standpoint, my personal goal is to be in every NFL city within four years. We just got recapitalized by a private equity firm 10 times larger. So I have the all the all the, the dry powder, I call it, to, to find the right companies and build and grow and hopefully, you know, reach my goal. Mariplex is different. Yeah, you know, we're one Mariplex. And what that means is we're one sales organization, one operational organization, one technical organization, you know, one executive team. You know, what we're building, when you look at the MSP marketplace, there's tens of thousands of SMB MSPs. When you look at the enterprise, there's a handful of, you know, think of the IBM Global Services when you look at the mid market, the two hundred to ten thousand, there's not a nationally known coast to coast, north to south, brand, true brand MSP MSSP consulting firm in the nation, and that is what Mariplex is very very efficiently building. And I talk about you know I'm a, I speak as you know a lot at conferences on M and A because no one's done 
in the, what I've done and what we've done in the industry, you know, going from selling a business 27 months ago to acquiring 10 companies in a two-year period. And what brings me and us our success is the Mariplex story, what we're building, what we're doing, what we're growing. Many organizations, and, and I re fully respect all my competitors. You know, we sit in panels, we have drinks together. You know, there's a lot of franchise type of models. You know, you do what you, you know, tomorrow's going to be just like yesterday. You know, we'll do the accounting, we'll do the back end, and one day we'll turn around and sell it and have some better valuation, you know, things like this. In the one Meriplex world, we are building 100%. That SMB and mid market coast to coast, north to south brand in the nation. The 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 the, the message with Meriplex, you know, we go into a territory. I call it measuring up. When I was preferred technology solutions, I would sit at the you know the, the speaker tables, the business events, and charity events, have great conversations. And what would happen is, Neil, who are you? My president, CEO of Preferred Technology Solutions. How big are you? you know, the air went out of the room. We couldn't effectively <laughs> attack that mid-market 210,000 effectively. Yeah. With the power of Meriplex, we're very, very able to go in and attack those, those types of organizations. So we do yeah. a phenomenal job in the SMB, but really work our way up. Also, it's that mid-market where you didn't measure up before, but you can measure up now. And back to whether it be a teammate that. I call this a story. You know, the story is when you transaction day is T, T minus is pre-transaction, T plus is post-transaction. What is that story that you're going to tell your employees, these teammates, this family that brought you to where you are? What are you going to tell your employees, your teammates, as well as tell your customers about why you became part of a different organization? The Meriplex story resonates extremely well with the teammates. It resonates extremely well with the customers. And that's what Meriplex is because what we're building adds value to the customers. It certainly adds value to the quality teammates that you have. You have given them much more upside. It does a great job for the former CEOs who are part of the leadership team. And also it puts you in a perfect place to use your superpower. You know, what I call a superpower is everybody, you, me, the audience, there's usually 25% of the business that you love. There's 75% that you really don't like very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Consider the possibility of finding, knowing your superpower and have all your efforts, your, your future based on being the best you can be in that lane and have other people with those superpowers in those other lanes. That's what Meriplex is extremely good at doing. Yeah. We bring that line trust together, put you in the right lane and build something that's, that's not just Neil talking about how great Meriplex is, but again, the financial markets who are saying, wow, you guys have done great so far. We totally believe in you. And your next step of the journey, and we want to be part of it. And that's the exciting thing of the future. What, what we're going to become, I have no doubt, is what I said. The nationally known, coast to coast, north to south, SMB and mid-market, MSP, MSSP, technology consulting firm in the nation. Mark my words. Yeah. No, thank you. And uh, Neil, how can people get in touch with you? What is the best way for people where they want to explore collaborations, any kind of partnership with the Mariplex? I think you are their face in the channel. So sure. people hearing and interested in talking to you, what is the best way for them to reach out to you? Sure. You know, there's two ways. You know, number one is I fully understand the sensitivity of an, of an MSP that wants to consider I call it the art of the possible. And that's where it starts, a simple conversation about the art of the possible. You know, there's things that we're looking for as an organization, which are successful MSPs. And nothing's too big, you know, for us, but successful MSPs with good quality reoccurring revenue, 
with good quality leadership because we want those leaders to continue with us. But there's a few different ways. Obviously, I speak at a lot of conferences and attend a lot of conferences. Hunt Me Down is number one. Yeah. Uh, and MedWed and M-E-D-W-E-D at Meriplex.com is a good way. And mm-hmm. of course, LinkedIn, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Hey, Neil, just want to have a conversation. Very confidential about the art of the possible. Yeah. And we're going to share this, uh, your contact information uh, uh, as well. So, Neil, thank you so much for coming to my show and sharing your experience, sharing your thoughts, sharing your you know, insights that you have gained over many years as an entrepreneur and helping our next generation of entrepreneurs uh, travel m- more efficient journey. Because, you know, when, when you said, I wish I knew what I know right now when I was running MSP or I was starting my business. So for those individuals, we, they are just starting their MSP or they are in the early stage, they're smaller MSPs. If you want to, you know, what Neil shared today, is there's just so much there for us to learn from. And if you want to learn more from Neil, he has shared his information as well. So we appreciate you, Neil. And I look forward to seeing you at one of these upcoming shows and you take care and have a good day. Thank you very much, Sonny. And, you know, thank you for being such a sunshine (laughs) in community. You know, your your, your positivity, your, you know, again, when you walk in a room, the room gets brighter. When Cam (laughs) walks into the room, the room gets brighter. Thank you so much for being you. Have a great day, everybody. Reach out to me. I will share whatever I can with you. I love helping and mentoring. So thank you. Thanks, Neil.